Sup shooters, my name is Logan aka Spiderhands and welcome to SP Reviews where today we have ourselves a track from an act named Buffol1 titled Urban Myth and if we switch over to here we have the track on the screen, this is actually the video for it we're gonna listen through this track from start till finish and we're gonna hear what we think, let's go let's do this, what have we got? Interesting uh, combination with the uh, oh. Come on, man, let's go. Nothing else. Productions. Baffle one. Check. Come on, man. Track. Damn, we are. There was no hesitation here. The sound of the siren with the piano coming in with this interesting um. Oh. First of all, shout out for having a lyric video. You know, even though I don't think it should necessarily be a need for someone to have a lyric video for their music, especially with rap music, for like someone who's reviewing music like me, or even for fans who just want to sort of like read and take in the lyrics and everything you're putting forward. It's really helpful. Secondly, slick production, nice clarity of the different elements of the mix, including the drums and this interesting, fun little uh, sort of synthesis thing, synthesis uh, kind of thing you got going on in the center field. Is this through composed? Yeah, please more. Please more. I'm liking the fact we're just having two two rounds of verses, I suppose, you know. A really simple bum 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 and a really spooky kind of vibe to it with the synthy kind of cries in the background. Slick groove. Interesting um, filtering of the vocals as well to make them stand out amongst everything else. Come on, Baffle, let's go, man. Check. Come on, come on. Man, Great Christmas with the as well. I plead the fifth of hope and fable till it's urban myth. A missing facts that engage, kill the TV kid. A kid around with whatever mood I be tripping in. And squeeze the life out of mice when I'm gripping them. And do for dose, quick to light up that medicine. And come and toast the craft, I wake up with adrenaline. Come with toast the craft and wake up with adrenaline. So you're sleeping on it and waking up with fury, ready to go at it. But then again, I'd be mazed, I'd be stepping in. Mitch Kramer days, place the pen right up off the page. And disengage, find the keys when I'm feeling caged. Unlock the chapter, ever change it and find the chain. The chain will break, no mistake, right against my rage. And find the pain, face it out, and then I'd be unfazed. And pace yourself, it really pays just to know your place. It really pays just to know your place. I'm spacing out with the one, one to trip, one for fun, one for some, one for some, and I beat the kid just to baffle one. The kid just to baffle one. Dope. And we just got the, the, the vinyl hum. The LP sort of, sort of noise at the end. Damn, we just came in. Urban myth. Great, uh, great work there at the end with that baffle one line. Bringing himself in to let us know more about him. I think that's really dope. Um, really great wordplay there. Because this is effectively the conclusion of my this track by Baffle One titled Urban Myth. I think this is basically talking about himself as a rapper being that urban myth. His sort of flow as a musician, the way that he approaches his craft. I also remember him saying like he's amazed that he's stepping as if he doesn't take it for granted that he's in the position he's in with his music, which I think is great. The, the track, it shows his enthusiasm as a musician, as a rapper and his person, and I think that it's great to get that on display. The guy's got a fantastic vocabulary though. Like honestly, I'd recommend just reading through the lyrics without necessarily even listening to him and just learning more about the story as you go along. It's interesting to read. It's interesting to read there. The phrasing of it, you know, the phrasing of the actual lyrics in regards to his vocal performance there is uh, splendid. I think that it really works to sort of have a grandiose scale of things, you know, the urban myth, talking about himself, not just his achievements, but also a sense of mysticism about it at the same time. And his vocal performance has a confidence that exudes that, it backs it up. I mean, we have someone here who is simply capable on the mic, you know, when he's you know squeezing the life out of it it's uh you know it's it's his passion it's his motivation it's basically his niche and you, you when you when you listen to this guy go i kind of spit on that mic there with that da ba ba the da ba da 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 that 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 just that percussive vibe to it which really works alongside the intense coloration of what's going on with that 
sort of main sort of synth melody the 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 bass there the bass is fills that low end so so well it rolls and it slithers along like a snake in the grass and and the drums as well the side chain of those is phenomenal with a similar groove that goes throughout a little bit of a break in between the two verses but it's really charming but just here yeah, getting back to the vocals i don't think you need to do it differently he handled himself really well there for a first impression for me of baffle one i'm very happy with it i don't listen to a lot of hip-hop like this a lot of the times a lot of the stuff i listen to is relying on that kind of triplet kind of flow that we have with a lot of hip-hop and rap nowadays where we're dependent on the da 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 you know that kind of and there's nothing wrong with that but to go back to that sort of old school flow is great i like the distinct lack of a chorus in this track i think that we didn't necessarily need a hook line especially in a track that is two minutes long like this we could just have two sides of the coin let the person finish on the baffle one uh, sort of hook line at the end um you know urban myth it's just the story of that urban myth about who the artist is about, you know? I think that's great. That's all you need there. You don't need to overcomplicate it. You had that motif in the background, which didn't need to change because it was engaging enough on its own to, to not need to switch it up. When you've got a song that's short, you can have that main of sort of accompaniment. As long as you take away the drums or something to sort of like establish a difference of groove or a difference of pace, just to keep things sounding reasonably fresh, people won't become disinterested or disengaged from it. So if you've got competent vocals, an interesting story, and then you've got that motif behind it, which had a sort of a spookiness, like it was an urban myth, like a folk tale or something like that. It was a bit of animosity toward it as well, as if it was something you shouldn't be taking lightly. It's not a joke. This is the real stuff. Um, which I enjoy as well. I think that's really cool. I'm um, sort of a minorish kind of thing with some sort of diminished or flat minus seven flat five harmonies in there, arpeggiated throughout that melodic motif, and um, it just that, that bass line. I just it cannot get over how sort of scintillating it was tonally, texturally. It just it's it's was so luscious. And really, it's incredible to me as well that you didn't need one. I mean, well, we had the sirens and everything like that that came in. You know, you had the sirens. They were, wow, you know, they came in. That was pretty intense and kind of full, full on. I mean, you know, when you have a siren, it illustrates that there's like an emergency or something like that, which adds to, the, again, the mysticism, the kind of the unsettling nature of the track. But you still wanted to hear more just because the guy was so engaging and, and energetic and, and really into it, you know? You could tell there was overall clear passion for the track. I'm not sure. Yeah, they got an EP titled The Catacombs, which is coming up soon so i'll put the art in here if you haven't seen it already but yeah just before we continue to the production recording mixing and mastering i don't think that we needed to do anything differently with anything else um again great first impression um things made sense there weren't any sort of red resonances in the frequency spectrum because you had things stacked on top of each other and we, again it was, when i mentioned the filtering on the vocals it's simply because the vocals were recorded well i like not only the fact that they are in the center field but you had some sort of double takes in the sides of the pan of the stereo field as well i think it was nice to get that width to the performance there i think as well in addition to that we had a great sort of sound overall to the the the, 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 the song itself, the instruments there, they surrounded you in the headphones. It sounded so nice and huge there and luscious, like a mist was floating around you, kind of like what was happening in the video, which again is testament to the to the overall sort of cohesiveness of the overall experience there, you know. Uh, things were connected well, it makes sense. That spooky, misty vibe with the Compton vocal performance that was engineered well. Um, with everything, like a bit of reverb and some delays and stuff like that, and maybe a little bit of extra modulation on the sirens, especially going down like that. Maybe there's a bit of automation reducing the pitch. I'm not sure, maybe they were artificially modified. But, but either way, man, just, you know, the side chaining again of the kicks, how everything was leveled was great. From a production and mixing perspective, I think they're again that having the vocals reasonably clear, other you know, raw otherwise, aside from like a bit of compression, just to balance it out with everything else is a smart move. And the limiting and compression overall of the track, you know, the way it was not only the way it was leveled, but it was like nice and loud without pumping. There wasn't any sort of like there was like dynamic range to the performance as well, you know. We, it wasn't just the same loud as the entire the entire time, especially from like a perceived loudest perspective. I think that's just simply because, again, taking away some of those lower elements and bringing them back in with those verses, um, you know, it just made them stand out a bit more. And it was like those two verses were the choruses. Those two verses were the important ones. So so well done to Beth R1 on this. Um, legitimately, I, I think that they've got a future if they keep at it because this is my review of this track. Um, you know, Urban Myth, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please do go check out Baffle One's various social medias and I'm sure this will be on all digital stream platforms if not already, especially the Catacombs EP. Stay cool and stay safe and please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time as either help more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on in the world and I'll catch you in the next review. Spider hands out.